my absolute honor to welcome, to give us our welcome remarks, Dr. Agnes Calibata, president of the AGRA and host of the AGRF Secretariat. Let's give her a warm welcome. <laughs> Your Excellency, Right Honorable Prime Minister of the Government of Rwanda, Your Excellency, Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, the Chair of the Agro Board and Chair of the AGRF Partners, Honorable Ministers here present, Honorable Leaders of the Industries in the Agricultural Sector and beyond in Food Systems, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to the AGRF 2022 here again in Kigali. We are extremely happy to host you today and we are extremely happy to see the excitement that you have brought back to Kigali. It seems like we are all anxious, anxiously waiting to meet each other. I just want to remind you one thing. Someone yesterday said it looks like the food system followed me to Kigali. No, I just want to tell you that actually the food system borrowed from the AGRF. The AGRF was always this big. So just to help you understand that we are extremely proud of this forum and we are proud of many of you that have come to join us in Kigali from the food system summit and continue to be part of this journey. My, my job here today is really just to give you a few highlights. Today, we, we started off with um, the presentation of the food crisis, recognizing fully well that we are actually sitting in the midst of a food crisis that we shouldn't be sitting in the midst of. So the conversation here, I hope, did highlight that. We then have the opportunity in the Food System Summit that was many of you participated in, many of our countries participated in. That's going to be the remaining part of today's theme whether it is the ASR that is being launched, or whether it is the afternoon where countries will step forward and present the first pathways that are being, I mean the first strategies and, and, and investment opportunities that are coming from the Food System Summit. Uh, by the way, it's just one year since we had, uh, it's September, one year after the Food System Summit. So we are happy that again here in Kigali, we can talk about celebrating the first uh, strategies and investment plans coming out of the food systems. Tomorrow we'll talk about climate change and the journey to COP27 because that's what this is about too. We are in the midst of a climate crisis and we have to address that. But also tomorrow we'll talk about nutrition because that's the other crisis we have as well with obesity levels increasing, with so much lack of inclusion, so many people having fallen out of the ability to feed themselves starting with COVID-19 and all these crises. The next day is one of the biggest opportunities, talking about trade and the opportunities we can have around trade, but also we have the Council of the Wise, where our, 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 our wise uh, former heads of state and other people, uh, the former heads of leaders of industry, also have an opportunity to meet and have a conversation around how we can move things forward. Friday we'll have the closing ceremony. And really, this is, the closing ceremony is going to be about what did we agree on this whole week? Because this week comes at a very crucial time, a crisis, a food crisis, that is moving on to UNGA, the UN, where people are going to be having these conversations and what we do. We want to make sure that Africa does have a view before we go to UNGA. Going on to COP27, where we are talking about resilience, resilience, and resilience and adaptation. What's going to be our view going forward? So as we come together with this energy here in this room, as you come together to meet again, as you come together to have an opportunity to have conversations, let's keep those things at the back of our mind, that this is an opportunity for Africa to start chattering a path forward across all these crises but also how we come to work together across all these crises. So thank you for being here today. Welcome to Rwanda. Rwanda is my home, as well as you would know. But, so I'm really part of, I'm, I'm very happy and excited to be welcoming here today. So we'll see you during the week, and thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, 
for honoring our invitation and being part of us today. Thank you again. And I would like to also welcome on stage Honorable Gerardine Mukeshimana, Minister for Agriculture and Animal Resources of the Government of Rwanda. Let's give her a warm welcome. Right to Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, Your Excellency Henry Mariam Desai-Len, the former Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Chair of AGRA and the AGRF Partner Group, uh, Honorable Ministers, uh, dear Dr. Karibata, President of AGRA and the UN Special Envoy for Food Systems Summit, Excellencies, uh, colleagues, many familiar faces. Good morning and uh, welcome to Kigali. We are really happy to see so many colleagues make it, making it to Kigali. It's our, our first in person AGRF after two tough and long years. So we are thrilled to have you in Rwanda and we really appreciate that you have given us an opportunity to be your host uh, again. Uh, right Honorable uh, Prime Minister, I think uh, uh, it has been mentioned uh, previously by Dr. Karibata that we are having this summit in the middle of the crisis. Uh, it's, um, COVID, climate, uh, conflict, or food, fuel, fertilizer crisis. I mean, anyone can name it the way he wants, but uh, the most important thing is that uh, we are into the crossing road of uh, how we survive as a uh, people. Uh, now, we have been having many uh, similar meetings, but I think and I hope this one is going to be a game changer because uh, we haven't, I mean, there was a food crisis back in 2008, but a similar thing like what we have today uh, has not happened, at least in my generation. So I really appreciate everyone uh, being here. And the question becomes that, uh, why are all of these uh, issues are not hitting for the first time? We have been discussing so many things and uh, we all the time speak of uh, small scale farmers, we speak of hunger, we speak of unlimited land size in Africa, we speak of young people potential, we speak of agribusiness uh, worth of what we should be getting out of these meetings. But over and over, we find it to be at a small scale. So I really hope that uh, this, co I mean, this crisis that are affecting us at a personal level, I know COVID affected us at a personal level. What resulted of that was that uh, the messenger RNA that has been in the publications and the lab notebooks for the last uh, six years came up to be a, ro a robust uh, technology that has given us RNA, uh, uh, COVID vaccine and uh, is going to be used in uh, RNA uh, therapies to treat complicated uh, diseases. I'm really happy to know that some of the partners in the room are also working to get the technology at the use of uh, uh, people to deal with uh, crop pests. It's a, a new powerful technology that is coming up. And that is one of the technologies that is at the table because COVID affected us at the personal level. Can we really see that this 
uh, conflict that we are having, this uh, crisis that are having, we know we all the time say that they are affecting most the vulnerable. But I know many middle class people are suffering because the food prices are really draining their pockets and things are changing. So my wish uh, from this week uh, long gathering is that at the end of it we come up with uh, actionable plans that are getting us out of the present uh, situation, but also that are going to help us to build the uh, resilience for our future survival. Science has demonstrated again and again that the world is, has been shaped to host us as uh, living organisms. But still, for us to survive, we need food to grow and reproduce. Without food, we are, <laughs> uh, there is so, it's really hard for us to grow and survive. And uh, we shouldn't be keeping hearing that millions of people are hungry, millions of children are malnourished. I mean, we need to take it to the level to feel that we are affecting the survival of certain living organisms, which are us as human beings. So without uh, taking so long, once again, I'm really thrilled to have you in Ikigari. Welcome back home. This is the home of uh, AGRF. Uh, when we, call, we bid for it in uh, 2019, we believed in the power of this platform to bring real changes in their lives. So feel comfortable. Uh, feel at home and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Some powerful statements there. And as we move into the next sequence of this morning's events, we're going to talk about advancing Africa's food system, starting with the presentation of the report on the Africa Agricultural Status Report. It is my honor to welcome Professor Edward Mumbaya, Research Professor at Cornell University for the, the Department of Global Development to give us insights about what this report entails just exactly. Let's give him a warm welcome. Uh, right Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, Your Excellencies, uh, President Kalibata, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, Please allow me to stand on established protocol. Good morning, AJRF. I say good morning, AJRF. That's more like it. That's Africa, the Africa that I know. Well, it is my distinct honor to stand on this platform today in this beautiful city of Kigali to share with you key highlights from the African Agricultural Status Report, AASR. As you know from previous summits, the AASR is the AGRA's flagship publication that focuses on key emerging agriculture and food security issues around the continent. The title of this year's report is Accelerating African Food System Transformation. This report builds on many excellent reports and strategic documents that have already been written on those issues. The reports include previous AASRs, Proceedings from the recent UN Food System Summit, National Agricultural Development Frameworks, Sustainable Development Goals, AU's Agenda 2063, and many, many more. So you must be wondering, what is new in this report? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the journey towards food and nutritional security for Africa has a very clear destination, zero hunger. Thanks to the many strategy documents and all these key summits, we also have a very reasonable consensus on the roadmap. That is sustainable intensification, climate smart agriculture, and the food systems approach. What this report does, what the report focuses on, is how we can get there faster while adapting to this ever-changing terrain. Time is of the essence. We must accelerate the transformation of African food systems. 
The report opens by outlining what is at stake. Africa's food systems are highly vulnerable to climate change, conflict, and other shocks. They also, by the way, impose very high costs on environment and biodiversity. Simply put, the status quo is unsustainable. Without transformative change, African food systems will continue to slow down human development and will continue our over-dependence on food imports. Without transformation, our food systems will further exacerbate climate, environmental destruction. We emphasize in this first chapter the need for true cost accounting for our food systems so that we can factor in all the costs and benefits on natural, social, human, and produced capital. Now, to achieve food and nutritional security, African governments must anticipate and proactively respond to major demographic, economic, environmental, and social mega trends that are shaping the continent's food systems. These mega trends include rural, op rural population growth and associated land scarcity, rising urban population and associated increase in demand for food, economic transformation, including rising wages and per capita incomes, climate change and the increasing incidence of extreme weather events. I don't know about you, but every time I turn onto the TV, there's something about extreme weather in the news these days. Also, shocks from global health crises, economic disruptions, and conflicts such as the Russo-Ukraine war. And lastly, we must harness the accelerated pace of technical innovation in the realm of digital agriculture. The character of Africa's food systems continues to evolve in response to these drivers. And so too should our, the nature of the food policies and investment strategies. We're chasing a moving target here. So chapter two looks at the role of leadership in harnessing this collective effort, shared responsibility, and greater stakeholder engagement, as well as rallying political will to achieve food system transformation. To continue on my journey metaphor, these are the drivers or the pilots that can either step on the accelerator or push on the brakes. The multidimensional and complex nature of our food systems requires that key actors, including national governments, international agencies, civil society, farm organizations, and private sector should work together towards this common goal of food and nutritional security. Our political systems especially governments, regional bodies, such as AU, ECOWAS, EAC, COMES, and SADAC, are at the center of leadership and coordination of food system transformation and interventions. Leadership and coordination should adopt a multi-stakeholder approach to enhance efficiency in resource use, effectiveness in interventions, buy-in from targeted communities, and better targeting of interventions. Chapter three, contributed by my good friends at African Development Bank, explores investment gap that is required to sustain transformation. Financing is really the fuel that is needed to maintain acceleration. According to new estimates from New Growth Initiative, food system transformation in Africa requires up to 77 billion, that's billion with a capital B, per year from the public sector and up to $180 billion per year from the private sector. There's a very clear consensus on the critical role of the private sector in driving the required scale of investment. Now, mobilizing this financing at scale requires African governments to define priorities focused on cooperative advantage and inclusive growth, provide strong political commitment to finance priority actions, enhance coordination between government and private sector, and also ensure good governance and accountability towards our results. The fourth chapter explores human, institutional, and systemic capacities that are required to achieve transformation at scale. This is the engine that is going to set the upper limit on how fast we can accelerate. Capacity development requires uh, efforts that are guided by seven core principles. One, country ownership and leadership. Two, alignment with national needs and priorities. Three, 
use of national systems and local expertise. Four, no one side fits all tactics. Five, multi level approaches. Six, mutual accountability. And seventh, harmonizing action through partnerships. We also note that even though agricultural research capacity in Africa increased by 90% from 2000 to 2016, declining public sector investment in agricultural research system threatens Africa's capacity to adapt fourth industrial revolution technologies to local conditions. The report concludes with a very clear call for bold action. Accelerating African food system transformation is a complex task. Achieving the needed transformation while responding to all these ongoing crises will require a coordinated approach from all stakeholders. The report outlines key priority interventions by government, the public sector, development partners, and also the private sectors. It is time to put into action all those carefully calibrated strategies, policy reforms, and investment plans. The future of 1.5 billion Africans depends on the actions and decisions that we make here today. On that note, let me also point out that all the key decision makers for this required acceleration are here in the room today. Right here among us, we have representatives from highest levels of government, great researchers, development finance institutions, key donors, private sector, civic organizations, and even farmers. The buck stops here in this room. Now, I do not know about you, but for me, failure is simply not an option. I dream of a future where AGRF will be repurposed to Africa's Food Expo, where we can gather in a meeting like this to celebrate abundant food and the great diversity of Africa's delicious cuisines. Don't you all dream that? We do, right? Now, before I hand back to the moderator and the esteemed panel that's coming after me, I would like to thank Dr. Kalibata, uh, Jane Jaguna from Agra, Andrew Cox, and the rest of the team at Agra for this excellent opportunity. I would also like to acknowledge my co-editors for this report, Professors Tom Jane and Robbie Richardson, and a big thank you to all the contributing authors and reviewers for your excellent contributions to this report onwards and forwards with accelerating African food system transformation. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Asante sana. Thank you very much for sharing those insights and for giving us the dream that we will see the Africa that we want to see. Next up, I'd like to welcome the esteemed panel that we've just talked about. I'd like to welcome Honorable Minister Demba Sabali, Minister of Agriculture for Gambia. Doctor, and we can give him a round of applause as he comes to the stage. Dr. Apollos Nwafur, Vice President for Policy and State Capability at AGRA. Mr. Jai Shroff, CEO at UPL. And joining us virtually, Ms. Anka Opperman, Head of the Directorate 12, A Decent Work Worldwide, Food and Nutrition Security for the Federal Ministry for Cooperation and Development. So I'd like to start off by addressing my question to the Minister of Gambia. Considering the constrained fiscal budgets, as Minister of Agriculture, what do you see as the most important, um, let's say the most critical area of public investment when it comes to achieving food system transformation? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to be here. Good morning, His Excellency, the Prime Minister for Rwanda and former Pres uh, Prime Minister for Ethiopia. And his Excellency, the President of AGRA, I'll say good morning to all my co-panelists here and morning to the auditorium. As a government or ministers, um, our area of interest is 
uh, investing in the public. And given the question of the day, um, <clears throat> we have our priorities in the entire food system, in the entire agricultural value chain. Um, in public investment, we focus on production, we focus on processing, we focus on transportation and marketing, and also we focus on food waste, especially pre- and post-harvest uh, waste. In areas of production as a government, our investment priorities are focused on human capital, human investment. And this includes, um, in terms of education from the level of the university to the level of the farmer. Human investment is one of our priorities as a government. And also on the production, we focus on mechanization and technologies. This is a challenge, but also is our area of interest. Um, the most important part, as far as investment is concerned for the public, is land access and land policy development. We've realized that um, most of our producers are rural folks, and they are smallholder farmers. And access to land has been a challenge, especially to the women folks, unfortunately. This is an area that we are interested in and working on, that is our land policy and land access. Um, as a government, we also invest in high yield varieties. Um, if you know Gambia is the smallest country in mainland Africa, so land is a challenge for us, and so we are focused more on productivity than production. So high yield varieties are our priority investment areas, and also climate change resilient varieties. We are introducing um, and investing in salt tolerant varieties. We are also investing in drought tolerant type of varieties. And this is because of our ever expanding saline intrusion in our areas. Um, we are also investing in agroforestry because not only is it a reliable food source, but also it's a motivating factor for the never-ending climate challenges that we have in our part of the world. So these are areas that we are focused on as far as production is concerned. And then the, the next thing that as a government we work on is the issue of processing. Because um, what we have realized is there is serious uh, post-harvest waste in our part of the world. So processing seems to be one of the solutions uh, for way forward. And as a government, we invest in this area by creating a lot of tax incentives for people who are interested in processing, especially for mitigating post-harvest loss. We also invest in the infrastructure that is reliable and affordable electricity for processing to be able to take place. This is an area that uh, we focus on and that not only it minimizes post-harvest waste, but also it is a source of job creation for the youth, which is a challenge for our country in that part of the world. Um, other areas of interest for public investment include transportation and marketing. And in this area, we focus more on the infrastructure that will give access to the land, to the fields, but also access to the markets. So investment in infrastructure is a priority area for our government and for most governments in, the, in, in Africa. And in marketing, we talk about our pricing policies, that farmers get value for their products, but also we have challenge, and our donor partners are in the room. They are very familiar with this language of subsidies. It is a major challenge for most of us in government that we have to subsidize for a few of the products. These are areas that um, we are working on introducing smart subsidies um, for targeted beneficiaries. This is an area that we are investing. Okay. And also in marketing and transportation, we are also investing heavily on digitalization of data like the farmer information. Mm -hmm. This way we know the number of farmers, where they're located, the amount of land they are cultivating, and they, they have not only
target them for beneficiary purposes, but also be able to understand where are we, where are we heading, and are we heading in the right direction. And, and this is an area that we are focusing on. And finally, um, for public investment, we work seriously on food waste management because this is an area of concern, I guess, for almost every part of the world. Uh, if the figures are right, uh, Gambia or most part of West Africa may have up to 30% of their food uh, mm -hmm. getting wasted, either pre or post harvest. So our investment as a government in this area focuses more on food diversification. Uh, the population needs to be reoriented and there should be serious diversification of food sources. And also this gets us back to the issue of processing. Um, to manage pre- and post-harvest waste, we must be seriously engaged in processing uh, and, and marketing. And then that brings us to what are we doing as far as um, post-harvest management is concerned. One is appropriate storages. This is an area that we are seriously investing in, that products are appropriately stored, because aflatoxin is a major challenge for us that are engaged in groundnut cultivation in Gambia and Kasu production. These are uh, products that are high value if they are managed well, but they can definitely be uh, uh, a burden if aflatoxin gets in. So pre and post harvest management to, minim to minimize um, food waste is an area of investment uh, for our government and I'm sure is an area of investment for many governments. Thank and you. And I'm sure much. that we'll hear a lot more about that throughout the next couple of days. Thank you. So, um, based on or considering the elements that the minister has just shared with us, um, I'd like to ask all the remaining panelists, how do we move forward? What is the priority action point in just a few words for the purposes of time? And I'd like to start with you, our virtual participant, Ms. Oppen Opperham, Opperman. Thank you so much and uh, greetings from Berlin to Kigali. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, and an honor, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. My main message to you today is that a lot of good efforts to transform our global agri-food systems are already underway. And we, uh, this morning we already learned a lot about it. I just wanted to highlight that September last year, African heads of state and government adopted an Africa common position on food systems as a regional submission to the UN Food Systems Summit. And I would like to con congratulate uh, the African Union Commission and the African Union Development Agency for having coordinated this process successfully. We acknowledge the African common position and Africa's game-changing solutions that it contains. And um, let me emphasize, we stand ready to support AU member states in implementing the recommendations that emerged from the UN Food Systems Summit. And let's, let me just mention one other very, very important example. We also commend the African Union for advancing the implementation of the Comprehensive Ag Africa Agriculture Development Programme as the continent's key instrument to achieve the ambitious targets of the 2014 Malabo Declaration. The German government provided substantial support to the rollout of CAADP from 2008 to 2020, and we are happy to note that the food systems approach is now being conceptually integrated into the existing CAADP framework. I just wanted to start from these two very, very encouraging points uh, to say that uh, from my perspective, it's, it's very, very important that we connect, cooperate and coordinate and have a very, very close relationship to exchange um, the uh, available information and data and to learn in the process more and more about what actually is, is uh, needed um, to uh, foster the agricultural systems in, in, uh, in times of the food crisis. Many others already 
told us very, very, very important information about this today. And therefore, from a, a point of the German government, let me just highlight two areas which, uh, in our view, are of particular importance. The one is um, the uh, whole area of agriculture in the, in the sense that we want to increase or help to increase agricultural productivity uh, on a sustainable basis. We want uh, uh, that there is also included strengthening the capacity for adaption uh, and to increase sustainable consumption and reduce food losses. We already heard uh, about this uh, earlier. And, uh, and the second very, very important field from our view is uh, agroecology. And um, um, the, um, we, we have in our core area strategy, BMZ strategy, sustainable agri-food systems area of, uh, areas of intervention and agroecological strategy that provides a solid basis on, on which to increase productivity in a resource efficient and sustainable manner. And from our point of view, it is very important also to bring into practical work all the uh, uh, internationally uh, agreed guidelines and recommendations. Absolutely. For example, FAO's uh, 10 elements of agroecology. So just to give you an impression, those are two areas in which we think um, it is very, very important to, uh, um, to cooperate and to bring forward our international ag agenda. And I just wanted to end with um, 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 an invitation, actually, since um, under the uh, G7 German presidency, we launched the Global Alliance for Food Security, GAFs, and to, to combat a hunger, the, the hunger crisis and to bring together as many international actors as possible for, from all different areas um, to, to, to work together uh, um, uh, to assist in repurposing agricultural um, support to transform food systems. And I just to, wanted to end with an invitation to all uh, stakeholders present here today to join this important alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and a tangible invitation there. Uh, my next question, I'm going to ask you the same question, and if you can give it to one sentence for the purpose of time. What is your key message moving forward, Mr. Shroff? No, I think, um, you know, it's very uh, important uh, to understand the plight of uh, agriculture or the people involved in agriculture as the farmers. It's very important to understand from the point of view of a technology providing company like us. We work with farmers all around the world and particularly with small farmers. And a farmer in a five year cycle will definitely have a drought, definitely have a flood, definitely have a price collapse of his commodities and will have supply chain disruptions and by which his income gets disrupted and his cash flows get disrupted. Now, if we are not building resilience of these farmers. Talking about food systems doesn't matter because you can provide all the fertilizer, all the chemicals, all the technology to improve food productivity. But unless he has the capacity to absorb losses in one or two cycles and recover from that, uh, it's uh, very difficult to uh, take it to the next level. And for the last 10, 15 years, we've been trying to do that. And we keep finding bottlenecks because a farmer will work for three years, he has a bad incident of whatever natural calamity, and then he goes back to object poverty. Nobody wants to lend him, nobody wants to build infrastructure, etc. cetera. So, so the, 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 it starts with resilience of farmers. And uh, at UPL, we are working to, uh, in the rice value chain, cocoa value chain, potato value chain, sorghum, cotton value chains across Africa uh, to, to build resilience among farmers and uh, bringing in financial products. That's not our business, but bringing in financial products to actually benefit from carbon sequestration, giving him some resilience based on that, giving him extra uh, income. Uh, so these are some of the challenges which, uh, which uh, are being faced and for which we really need to start at the bottom if we want a consistent value chain to actually feed Africa and feed the world from here. Brilliant, thank you so much.
And uh, to you, Dr. Nwafo, what is your key message in one sentence? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think uh, what's important is to understand, um, I mean, uh, very excellent points from the Honorable Minister from Gambia here, who's talked about all the areas of investments. But I think what's important, in addition to that, is that we must begin to consider a, a new approach to leadership to drive food systems transformation globally, particularly in the continent. For example, one of the things we've seen uh, as AGRA is that, you know, there is data and analytics, right? But turning that data and analytics to strategic decisions that ensures that a leadership is able to make the right choices that will drive food systems transformation is important. So we need a leadership that is actually backed by evidence, but also a leadership that's flexible to the context that we face today. We know that the crisis that we're facing globally and in the continent is no longer a one-off issue. It's become an everyday thing. You know, so building resilient systems, ensuring that a leadership recognizes that and it's able to ensure that it's supporting you know, every member or every stakeholder rather who needs to support that leadership is important. I've always told people, listen here, every dollar counts for the smallholder farmer. They don't have the luxury of trial and error. And what that means is that we must have the right kind of enabling environment to support the farmers to ensure that they're able to increase their yield uh, as well as increase their incomes. And this is where leadership plays a role, from the policy-making environment to the issues of delivery, as well as the issues of you know, making sure that our farmers are able to thrive mm -hmm. despite the challenges that we face. Yeah. You know, and I think that's really important. A second thing I think that's really important is also the fact that we must begin to appreciate the fact that a data in itself is not as good as when it is turned into a decision. Yeah. Uh, and turning data to decision making is critical. So these will support the right kind of leadership within the context of building resilient systems, supporting our farmers, and working with all other sectors. Because food systems transformation is not just about food. It's about health. It's about education. For example, the school feeding program. Yeah. It's also about building an economy that is sustainable. Because food systems transformation is a driver of economic growth and not a product of. And I think we need to look at it that way. And that is a perfect closing statement for this panel. Building resilient, transforming food systems. Thank you so much to my esteemed panel. And as we go into the final sequence of this morning's events, um, we are about to launch the Africa Agricultural Status Report. But before that, to uh, give us his remarks, I'd like to welcome His Excellency Haile Mariam de Salane, Chair of the AGRF Partners Group and former Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Let's rise as he takes the stage. Your Excellency, Edward Girente, Prime Minister of Republic of Rwanda, Excellencies Minister of Agriculture, Trade and Finance, AGRF Partners, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm very pleased to stand here today after two years of having a virtual and hybrid AGRF as we can physically come together again. I am also delighted that the beautiful city of Kigali has opened its doors to host Africa in its flagship Agriculture and Food Systems Conference. With over 2,600 people in Kigali this week, we are able to have policymakers, researchers, farmers, development partners and civil society in one place to address Africa's vision of ending hunger, 
and achieving food systems transformation by 2030. The 2021 UN Food Systems Summit has brought a global shift from increasing productivity paradigm to that of food systems transformation. The food systems thinking has become even more urgent due to the nexus between food, agriculture, and the related issues like health, nutrition, education, trade, and industrialization. These are truly drivers of economic growth. Therefore, a food systems transformation is a key to economic transformation. We need this now. Anything short of this implies that Africa is likely to be the only hungry continent by 2030. The cost of food is 42% higher on average since the shock of COVID-19 and the food crisis began. With recurring climate change effects, the gains made in achieving food security are being eroded yet again, particularly in our continent, Africa. Furthermore, the increasing burden on our governments and farmers call for urgent and bold actions to be taken. It is for this reason that the theme of, for this year's AGRF is grow, nourish, and reward bold actions for resilient food systems. We are in a time when we need urgent actions because every minute when we do not take action, at least an adult, two children, and two women fall below the poverty line due to hunger and malnutrition. We can't afford to wait. We need bold actions because the challenges we are facing require a stronger and innovative leadership that improves coordination, strengthens our institutions, and delivers results in an integrated manner at scale. While there are examples of successes, achieving at scale has remained largely a challenge. The strategies and actions we will take from this summit must be resilient because the economic and climate-related shocks have revealed that our systems are fragile. Our people need new capacities and innovations, and innovation is no longer a luxury. The shocks are becoming an everyday challenge, thus resilience must be embedded in our strategies and actions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 2022 AGRFs has been designed to elicit new thought leadership that will result in bold actions. To ensure we deliver on, th on the theme, we have broken this down into four sub-themes, which include, one, advancing food systems action in the face of crisis, two, climate actions through and food, uh, for, for food systems, three, malnutrition and healthy diets, and four, markets and livelihoods. We have also improved our deal room, and evidence of this is that the fact that 15 African countries will pitch their investment plans with a growing number of investors who are eager to invest in SMEs for food systems transformation in the countries. The voice of our farmers remain important as they are at the center of food systems transformation. The Farmers Forum will ensure that our smallholders shape the outcomes of this summit and share the responsibility of taking bold actions. We will listen from them and give utmost attention to their views and recommendations. Equally, we shall also share lessons from leadership, finance, and accountability, advancing national food systems pathways. You will recall that in 2021, African countries united behind a common African position on food systems 
transformation to achieve the 2030 agenda. And more than two-thirds of them, that's 27 African countries, developed national pathways customized to their unique contexts. Also, in preparation for the 2023 Fertilizer Summit, the African Union Commission will be hosting a special event to prepare for the summit. This will ensure that we build momentum in this summit for the next one. Excellency Prime Minister, let me use this opportunity to appreciate your government for being a gracious host as ever and making everyone feel at home, home away from home, and comfortable here in Kigali. I'm very much delighted by the usual generosity and hospitality of the people and government of Rwanda, and would like to thank, from the bottom of my heart, our host, President Paul Kagame, for giving us this opportunity to convene this premier food systems forum in beautiful Kigali. As I bring my speech to a close, I would like to welcome everyone to the 12th AGRF and kindly invite Your Excellency to make your remark and to declare the summit open. I thank you. And now I'd like to welcome Right Honorable Prime Minister Edouard Nyirense for the official opening remarks. Your Excellency Haile Mariam, former Prime Minister of Ethiopia and Chair of AJRF Partners Group. Our distinguished guests, a very good morning. It is my pleasure to join you this morning for the official opening of the African Green Revolution Forum Summit 2022. The, gov the government of Rwanda is delighted to co-host this year's summit together with the African Green Revolution Forum group of partners. We are glad to have you all here attending this summit in person, unlike the two previous editions held in a hybrid format due to COVID-19 pandemic. Your presence here today is a testament of your commitment to keep on driving agricultural transformation and achieve Africa's agricultural agenda. Our theme for this year's summit, as has been mentioned, is grow, nourish, reward, bold actions for resilient food systems. This theme, this theme highlights our urgent need to build inclusive, sustainable, and resilient food systems in this post-COVID period. Over the years, Africa has achieved good progress in, a, in a different sectors, including agriculture sector, which was only disturbed by the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. While most countries are recovering from this global shock, our ability to get together more than ever is key in advancing food systems to ensure food, secu food security for our people. The current high food prices we are experiencing nowadays makes it difficult for families and the community to meet their own food needs. This calls for body measures to improve our capabilities for sustainable food production and supply to markets. What we do now impacts tomorrow's results. Increasing investment in strategic areas of agricultural value chain, such as 
reduction of post-harvest post losses, which are estimated between 30% and 40% of the total production in developing countries, use of fertilizers and improved seeds, adoption of smart agriculture, as well as the risking the sector will build resilient and sustainable food security. For this to be achieved, there is a need to build a strong partnership between the public and the private sector for diversified investment that broadly impacts agricultural production. The government of Rwanda has also invested heavily in agriculture extension services, including plant breeding research centers, and this has helped to reduce Rwanda's dependency on seed importation. Currently, most of our improved seeds are locally produced. Rwanda has also established the National Strategic Grain Reserve in response to potential shocks to food supply. This reserve is used, to, is used as a safety net to support communities affected by disasters while buffering prices and avoid market distortion. distortion. Distinguished guests, at a, at a continental level, as we all know, we have seen bold action at continental level with our head of state and the government coming together to form the African continental free trade area. We now need to leverage such mechanisms to ensure we are able to better meet our own food, our, our own food security needs. In this, journey, in this journey to transform African agriculture, African countries need to fully commit to, dri to driving a comprehensive agricultural transformation as a key foundation of our economic growth. Together, we will continue working on this agenda as we accelerate bold actions in this African Union year of nutrition. Let us take this moment to ensure we get back on the track toward meeting, meeting the goals we have set ourselves in achieving the 2030, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Malabo Declaration. As I conclude, I would like to express once again my gratitude to all of you who have honored our invitation for IGRF Summit 2022 in Ikigari, Rwanda. On this note, I hereby declare the, 20, the, the 2022 African Green Revolution Summit officially open. I thank you so much.